Einstein formulated the bubble paradox in 1909 to argue that atoms emit light as discrete particles or photons rather than continuous waves. In classical electromagnetic theory, an atom should emit radiation as a wave in a growing sphere, spreading out in every direction, like an inflating soap bubble. When the wave hits another atom, it would pop, and the energy spread around the circumference would be focused in that one place, while ceasing to exist elsewhere. That would be a non-local process, or what Einstein called spooky action at a distance. In other words, how would the distant parts of the bubble know that they should cease propagating outwards? Einstein believed it would make more sense to say that the first atom emits a particle or photon in the direction of the second atom. Later Einstein extended the bubble paradox from light waves to the quantum wave particle function of quantum mechanics. Mainstream physics has no explanation for such an event. If light is a wave that acts as a particle when it is absorbed and emitted by an atom, the bubble would expand at the speed of light, so any communication between the opposite sides would have to occur faster than light. The great thing about the bubble paradox is that it is easy to visualize and comprehend, and in many ways the complex paradoxes of quantum mechanics, like non-locality, quantum entanglement, superposition, and the measurement problem, are all based on this simple little bubble paradox. The great divide between classical physics and quantum mechanics is highlighted very well in this paradox. But the two, classical physics and quantum mechanics, can be explained as part of one universal and continuous process of energy exchange. I will explain this using the bubble paradox in mainstream physics, the photon forms a movement of positive and negative charge with the continuous flow of electromagnetic fields in our three-dimensional space. In the bubble paradox, this charge is relative to the first atom. In this theory, the outer convex surface of the bubble represents positive charge and the inner concave surface represents negative charge. When the bubble comes in contact with another atom, it forms a photon-electron coupling, or dipole moment, with the future unfolding relative to that atom. At that moment in time, the distant parts of the bubble have become part of the past, in the form of electromagnetic fields continuously changing with the continuum of time unfolding relative to the spontaneous absorption and emission of light from the second atom. The interesting thing about charge is that it can cover a large area of interstellar space. Therefore there is no spooky action at a distance in this theory. This is totally logical if space and time are properties of quanta with each photon oscillation only occurring once, forming a probabilistic future relative to the atoms of the periodic table and the wavelength of the electromagnetic spectrum. The future is continuously unfolding with the wave-particle duality of light and matter in the form of electrons, forming an interactive process or what I like to call a blank canvas that we can interact with, forming the possible into the actual. The future only exists as a probability wave function, and the past has gone forever. Within a process of continuous energy exchange, 
that forms the ever-changing world of our everyday life. It may seem far-fetched to say that the spontaneous absorption and emission of photon energy forms a universal process of energy exchange that we measure as a period of time. But it is logical when you think there is no flow or concept of time in the subatomic world within the atoms. Only the distribution of positive and negative charge. And this is exactly what you would expect if the future is unfolding relative to the electron probability cloud that surrounds the atoms as a process of energy exchange. Whenever the atoms touch, it is charge that makes contact. Also, whenever the atoms bond and break, there is an exchange of photon energy with the movement of charge. The universal nature of this process can be seen if we look at cell life. We find the build-up and organization of positive and negative charge relative to the membrane of each living cell. The reason why this is so difficult to comprehend is because we are made of atoms. Therefore, we can never measure this process over a period of time as we would with water bubbles forming and popping. This forms the great divide between classical physics representing processes over a period of time, as in Newton's differential equations, and quantum mechanics representing the passage of time, with probability built into the process. In the bubble paradox we only have particle characteristics in the moment of now, when we have the absorption and emission of light. As a wave, radiation radiates out in every direction, forming a sphere. This forms a square of probability because the area of the sphere is equal to the square of the radius of the sphere multiplied by 4 pi. This simple geometrical process forms the probability and uncertainty of everyday life. With Heisenberg's uncertainty principle representing the same uncertainty we have with any future event at the smallest scale of a universal process. Within such a process each photon-electron interaction has perfect symmetry between the future and the past in the form of matter and antimatter with antimatter annihilation representing the past disappearing as the future unfolds relative to each new photon oscillation or vibration. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. It will help the promotion of this theory.